Excuse me, little dog. Ah! Fuck! Hi, guys. I am completely whipped. Yes, me and a little dog, we have been busting our ass trying to shut down bugs in a jar farm for the winter. Good lord, what do I got? There are four more days here to get this place shut down for the next six months here. And we are already at Wednesday night, October, good lord, where are we? October 25th, 2023, something like that. Uh, anyway, but I do want to send out a big thank you to Dulcinea's husband, for nipping in the bud my date with Dulcinea tomorrow, which would have eaten my entire day and probably thrown me into another year of uh, depression. So here's to you, brother. I do appreciate you <laughs> nixing the date with Dulcinea. We will see when I hear from that girl again. Anyway... Enough of Dulcinea. I promised you last night that uh, for the few people who want to, uh, what, what, what is the term? Uh, I'm, I, I, guys, I am so exhausted. I'm already having a senior moment. For anyone who wants to become downwardly mobile, Anybody who is, you know, just trapped in some awful dead end $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 job that, 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 you're just, you, that you're just trapped in a beautiful home on the green belt. You, you, you got dozens of friends, you know, vying for your attention. You have all of these women uh, bothering you uh, for your company, uh, and you just want to get away from all that. You you just you look at your life, at your beautiful home, your successful career, your active sex life. Uh, you know the parties that you throw, the parties that you go to, that damn seven thousand minutes per month uh, yakking on your cell phone. You just, you just wake up one day and decide this is not the life for me anymore and you want to uh, become downwardly mobile uh, and simplify your life. Uh, and get out of the matrix. I am the person you need to talk to. I got out of the matrix in 2008, and here I am in a 49 square foot converted tool shed behind a shack on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere pulling burdock burrs out of my dog's anus is what uh, I do with my life. Uh, so if anybody, I, I, I know all of you uh, want to know, Hambone, how did you do it? How did you so radically transform your life and, uh, you, you know, uh, just, uh, in, 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 in just enjoying your life of solitude, uh, celibacy, and poverty. Uh, it's, it, it's not as easy as you think. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this many times, you know, getting out of the comfort trap the velvet rut. It, it's harder to get out of it than, than it is to get in it. 
you know, once you, uh, you know, in this culture that worships all of this stuff, uh, literally worships all of this stuff, the, the beautiful home, the nice car, uh, you know, whining and dining uh, with your clueless moron friends, of course, uh, drugs, alcohol, sex, uh, all of this stuff. Uh, it, it takes a hell of a lot of work to, to, you know, to claw your way to the top of this heap. And the only thing harder then getting to the top of it is to jump from it. Uh, I, I, I remember I, I've, I've mentioned this several times that after I had, uh, you know, made the decision to go from becoming a, uh, a, a very popular a successful realtor with a beautiful home and move off to the, uh, the Peruvian Amazon to start my new life. And I had been gone from Austin, Texas for a few years. And I came back and I remember going, walking into Maria's Tacos on South Lamar Avenue in South Auburn, back before Maria's got paved over by a Walgreens, I believe. Uh, it used to be I would walk into Maria's or, or pretty much anywhere in South Austin, Texas, and I would know minimally half the people there. And I remember there, like going in there and recognizing like one person and I went up to my buddy and, and, and you know like nobody recognized me and, and, and I laughed and I and I said well I can certainly see uh, how I have fallen from the South Austin social ladder and he turns to me and, and he goes Hambone you did not fall you jumped uh, and jumping off the social ladder uh, when, when you've got to the top rung is it, it, it's the hardest damn thing you, you're ever going to do. This is why virtually nobody does it. And, uh, you know, with, with, with all of the shit that, that I talk about Guy McPherson on this channel, I, I do respect the guy for, uh, you, you know, taking this plunge uh, when he walked away from his successful career as a, well, I, we, we think he walked away. I, I, anyway, uh, now, of course, Guy, Guy McPherson was, uh, was, 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 well, he was picked up by a, 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 uh, you know, some little bimbo, deep pockets, sugar tit to, uh, anyway, we're not going to go off. So while I am waiting uh, to find my own deep pocket sugar tit to, uh, so I can be a doomer and fly around the world and swim in saltwater pools, I'm going to sit here and, uh, just tell you how I did it, because people are like, Hambone, how did you do this? And how did you go uh, from that from that former life to being, you know, what, what am I? I am a, a, uh, a doomsday prophet, an environmental alarmist, and a chronicler of the long overdue collapse and fall of Western civilization. Uh, well, one way you do it is just you announce the intention of doing it, and then you go do it. But before I get into specifics, I just want to read the end of this uh, long essay that I found on medium.com. Ironically enough today, this, this article showing up today 
from a fellow I've never heard of named David Todd McCarty. David Todd McCarty and his essay, This is Not My Beautiful Life. <laughs> this is not my beautiful life. Uh, and that, you know, that's a talking head song. So, uh, so essentially what David's story is, he was a lot farther, at least up the financial ladder than, ladder than I was, that uh, he was actually making $350,000 a year, which is about three times what I was making, uh, on my way to making 500000 uh, when I completely melted down and came to hate everything I was doing. Uh, there you go. So, he was offered an opportunity to take over the company and he turned it down. Uh... There you go. Uh, <clears throat> it was clearly not my best move financially, and I may still live to regret it, but I figured that if I accepted the deal, I would make so much money that I would never be able to walk away. You spend what you make, no matter how much it is, and then you have to keep feeding the beast. So... I walked away, and then he, uh, and, 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 and then uh, he tells his story. It's a good read. I will try to, uh, to remember to put this link on, uh, But where I'm going to pick up, so we're, we're going to, I'm just going to pick up at the end of his essay because it is certainly germane uh, before I tell you how I uh, walked away from uh, my beautiful life. Walking away from my beautiful life. And now he's, you know, kind of doing what I'm doing here. All I can think to do is offer a clarity of thought based on experience to attempt to break down the human condition and how we match up against whatever hellscape our technological advances inflict on us. Historically, human society has rarely regressed descending back into darkness once we have emerged into the light, but that doesn't mean it could not happen. Are we headed for a second taste of a new dark age? Quite possibly. After years of thinking big, imagining global repercussions, and assuming everything was eternal, my world has begun to shrink. I am bringing things closer to home and not too far down the road. It's a matter of scale. I no longer think I can change the world, so I am left wondering what I can change. And the only reasonable, rational response I can come up with, it's not flashly flashy, and it's, and it won't be remembered, but it is authentic. I am the only thing I can change. Ironically, I'm no longer even sure that's possible. I don't know if I can change who I am, but I can control how I see the world 
and what my reaction to it will be. That much I can control, that much I can handle. When we are children, our worlds are so small and simple, life can sometimes be challenging, but it isn't complicated and it's always interesting. Growing older is regressing to a smaller, familiar, more simple state where truth becomes clearer and wonder and joy again play a part. I have to keep reminding myself that you have to suck the marrow out of life. No one ever said that would come with a fancy lifestyle. If you are unhappy without money, you will never be happy with it. You will just have different problems. And that, that works in reverse too, guys. <clears throat> we must seize each day and appreciate the little moments we will miss when we're gone. We must do it before it's too late, otherwise known as while we still can. No one knows the number of days that remain. The sun is setting and shadows are growing longer. Carpe diem, seize the day otherwise known as get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Anyway, David Todd McCarty, I thank you for uh, doing such an eloquent summation of uh, pretty much, uh, the, the you know, he sounds a lot like, now, don't know how much of a doomer he is. I do not know whether he has a woman in his life or not, although I gather that he does not. That, uh, I'm guessing that he used to have plenty of women and is now alone in his simpler lifestyle. So anyway, guys, with that long preamble, uh, here is my advice to get started when you think you are ready, when you are ready to jump the shark, to get out of the matrix, uh, to break free of the comfort trap and the velvet rut, keeping in mind if you break free from a comfort trap, that probably means in many ways in your life, you are going to be less comfortable and uh, you might not have your rut lined in velvet so much. Uh, but for whatever reason, this is how I did it uh, at age 49. Uh, I mentioned last night, uh, in my rant, uh, well, before we talk about Terrence McKenna, I, I, I want to talk briefly about Carlos Castaneda. I actually uh, got into Castaneda in the mid 1990s. I took a a, uh, a a few years off out of my real estate career to catch my breath and to help take care of my mother who was dying of cancer. Uh, so it was pretty much the years 96, 97, and 98 that I got into the works of Carlos Castaneda. I highly recommend uh, studying Castaneda, but I, uh, I know full well that nobody has the time in their life to do it. Uh, there, there is only one way to 
uh, study the works of Carlos Castaneda, that is to start with chapter one of the first book, and every single day you read one chapter. Do not try to read two chapters. You have to turn off the goddamn cell phone, the computer. You need to hermetically seal yourself and plan to spend one to two hours a day reading from word one of chapter one of the first book and go right on through till the end. Uh, there's some controversy on whether it's 9, 10, or 11 books. But anyway, uh, it, it, it is a monumental challenge. It is not for pussies. Carlos Castaneda is not for pussies. You do not take little sound bites of Carlos Castaneda. I spent three years studying Carlos Castaneda, reading one chapter a day. I read the entire series of books from beginning to end. Then I did it again, and then I did it again. I have read one chapter a day uh, of Castaneda and uh, the fictional character of Don Juan Matus and, and all of that. I, I'm uh, not going to sit here and, and, and go down a Castaneda rabbit hole. If you are not prepared to do it right, don't do it at all. Okay? Carlos Castaneda is not for pussies. If you are a pussy and, and, and you can't turn off that fucking smartphone, the fucking computer, whatever, you are not ready for Carlos Castaneda. Okay? It takes some fucking balls to get into Carlos Castaneda, and that goes for women as well. I don't expect one person listening to me to, to, to take that advice. If you actually get uh, to what is it, the third chapter of the second book, you will find out that Carlos Castaneda has virtually nothing to do with drugs, with drugs. After, uh, I think, the first two chapters of the second book, Carlos Castaneda never mentions drugs again. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and the very word drugs, they are spirit guides, uh, plant-based spirit guides, which is what we're going to uh, get, get, get in next to. So I don't expect anybody uh, in, in, in the year 2023 to have the time or the inclination in their life to, do, uh, to, to study Carlos Castaneda the correct way. And it, it's better not to even open the first page of the first book if you don't plan to do it right, okay? So it's, it's not even worth talking about. Uh, so I did all of, I did my Castaneda years. It was back when I was dealing with all of this crazy space alien shit. So anyway, I did the Castaneda stuff and uh, I, got back to the uh, to the art of stalking and, uh, and, and ended up moving to um, you know I, you know I got back into real estate and I and I moved to Austin Texas and, and, and all of this and 
kind of let Castaneda go by the wayside. And uh, so anyway, I went back, um, you, you know, in, in back into real estate. Uh, I, good Lord, I, was it five or six homes that I owned? Um, you know, so it was at the end of 2007 when uh, I, I discovered uh, the, you know, the other number, the other teacher in my life, probably more germane, well, I mean, certainly more germane than even Carlos Castaneda, and that is the unbelievable body of work of Terence McKenna. Now, Terence McKenna is, is, is a little more approachable than, than Carlos Castaneda. Uh, Terence McKenna, he has a couple of books which are okay, but he's not so much a writer for anyone who doesn't, isn't familiar with, uh, with Terence McKenna's unbelievable body of work. Basically, what he did was sit down and rap. That the guy, his his mind, he was certainly one of the great minds of uh, of the twentieth century. He was probably, I'm quite sure that Terence dabbled in Castaneda, although he virtually never mentioned Castaneda. But if you go on YouTube, Terence McKenna. There are hundreds, there are thousands of hours of Terence McKenna videos where you can listen. Now, I do need to warn you that, that, that Terence talks like this, and a lot of people just cannot handle listening to Terence McKenna uh, ramble on and on and on. So anyway, he's a little bit of an acquired taste, but what you can do with Terence McKenna, <clears throat> unlike Carlos Castaneda, is, is you'll find if you start just you just dive in to YouTube with Terence McKenna videos, and thousands and thousands of them, and, and they range anywhere from two minutes to probably three or four hours, and. So, do not dive right in to an hour or two full lecture by Terence. What you want to do starting out is, uh, is you know, start out with the, the short videos. You know, I'm talking about 15 minutes and under, and spend... Try to spend an hour a day on uh, on Terence. You know, kind of graze around these shorter videos and work your way up. And uh, I, I I cannot even begin to explain what Terence McKenna uh, it, it at least did to me. But one thing that you will find when you get into Terence. It, it is the same uh, misunderstanding that people have about Carlos Castaneda that uh, he does recommend, uh, you, you know, heavy doses of hallucinogens. He's especially into mushrooms and ayahuasca, which is DMT, and he doesn't seem to be that much into mescaline uh, and peyote, although he's into that too. So you will, some people get the misimpression that Terence McKenna is just you know, all he talks about is, is taking. Well, he he's horrified by the word drugs, these um, these plant based uh, spirit guides, and it's the the reason 
that uh, this is an oversimplification. I think that Terrence McKenna, the main reason that he recommends these, um, you know, these psychedelics, whatever word you want to use for them, is the same reason that Don Juan recommended them to Carlos Castaneda when he was just starting down uh, his path. And what the, these powerful plant-based hallucinogens, for the record, I have never done a hit of acid in my entire life I have no interest in ever doing a hit of acid. All right. Um, just so you understand that, I need to make that clarification. But the reason that Don Juan got Carlos Castaneda to do these hallucinogens was to you know, crack his cosmic egg. It, it, it is a way... It is kind of a shock to the system. Uh, and then, you know, once, uh, once uh, Castaneda had, I won't say his brain fried, he had his mind expanded by these hallucinogenic experiences, then he could open himself up to, to, you know, to the important information, but until, you know, trying just to, th thinking that, that, that you're just going to hop out of your, your comfort trap or your velvet rut with no help, uh, Terrence calls it cleaning your disc that you have you know, imagine your, your cultural programming uh, just being a, a, a computer program and you need to clean your hard drive. You, you have to clean your disk before you can start putting new data onto it with an expanded consciousness. This is why Andy the Gardener Colony of Cells, Paul Whetstone, and I don't know how many of my, uh, my uh, they will never do any of these. They, they, you, you know, most people uh, have the, the positivist, I guess you call them, zero interest in cracking the cosmic egg and experiencing the, the, you know, these levels of reality that are just right here, you know, with us, these other dimensions of reality. And so, uh, one, obviously, after, as I began to, to listen to more and more of Terrence McKenna, I started listening to him in November of 2007, I was finding pretty much him saying the same thing that Castaneda was saying. Uh, cleaning your disk, moving your assemblage point, whatever you want to, you need a shock to your system. So uh, I was getting deeper and deeper in, into Terrence McKenna. And of course, while I was, you know, accessing all of this information, I was trying to run a successful real estate career. I was, you know, working at Keller Williams Real Estate in South Austin, Texas. So, you know, all day long, I would be writing up real estate contracts and, and, and all of this, and I would come home at night, and I would plug in to Terrence McKenna. So it was, it was obvious, guys, that I needed to do um, these, have these hallucinogenic experiences to clean my disc. And so what I chose 
in 2008 in April, May, and June. Uh, during the full moon in April of uh, 2008, I did what's called a heroic dose of psilocybin mushrooms. That's five dried grams, not the fresh stuff out of the cow pies. Five grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms. I did that and, uh, you know, in the full moon out in nature on top of a sand dune uh, on the coast of Texas is where uh, I, I did my first five gram uh, psilocybin mushroom trip, which was quite a night to remember. The next uh, in May of 2008, I did my first ayahuasca trip. Uh, you know, that, that's DMT. Uh, it's actually not as hard to find uh, ayahuasca as you think it might be. And I went, made the mistake of uh, simply because it was the, the, the way to find it, it, it is... I went to a meeting of the Daime Church, Church of Daime, D-A-I-M-E, which is actually a hardcore Christian right, that, that uses ayahuasca to uh, access the Holy Ghost, and that started off to be a fantastic uh, evening and, and, and probably was headed to be one of the great evenings of my life before a bunch of goddamn Christians fucked it up for me. But I still, uh, I, 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 they didn't totally ruin it. That was a wild evening. And then it was June of 2008 that I did San Pedro Cactus which is identical to peyote. It's just not quite as... Uh, it, it, it's San Pedro is... It, it's, it's two kinds of cactus. It's the same a drug, which is mescaline. Okay, so I did mescaline in the full moon in June of 2020, uh, of 2008, which was quite possibly the single wildest night of my entire life. I have told the story of that trip a couple of times. That is the night uh, that I actually became a doomsday prophet preaching the end times. That was the night it was actually mescaline on the heels of ayahuasca, which is DMT, on the heels of psilocybin mushrooms, that uh, it was the third experience in, in June of 2008 that uh, I did uh, mescaline uh, via San Pedro cactus, the quite possibly the single wildest uh, night of my life as far as the hallucinogenic experience was concerned. I can't get into that story right now. If anybody wants me to try to recap that story, I will, or you can find it somewhere. I think it was how I found, uh, <clears throat> how I found Quetzalcoatl, the Red Kachina, and Jesus uh, how, or something like how St. Peter led me. Uh, I, I, anyway, I actually saw Jesus that night, and I wasn't even looking for him, if you know what I mean. One of the wildest nights of my entire life. I have never read anybody else des to describing a an experience on uh, a visionary experience on... Uh, whatever you want to call it, San Pedro, peyote, or mescaline, as I had that night, but it was one of the life-changing uh, events of my life. 
<clears throat> and of course, all through this, I was also getting deeper and deeper into Terrence McKenna, and from Terrence McKenna, I started getting into the Doomosphere, and I know that I ran into um, uh, Michael Rupert, uh, who is a huge fan of Terrence McKenna, that Michael Rupert was, was a major aficionado of, of Terrence McKenna. It really influenced Michael. Um, he, Terrence influenced Michael like he did me. I have some crazy stories that involve Terrence McKenna. Uh, one of the craziest uh, stories, and I, I, I ended up selling my house to one of Terrence McKenna's best friends. That was a wild ass story. Uh, on and on. And then I you know, was getting deeper and deeper into the Doomosphere, and, and I realized, obviously, that my real estate days were over. But it's not that easy to, to disentangle yourself from a successful real estate career. You know, I had clients, I had sellers whose houses I was selling, I was working with buyers, I had all of these, um, I had all of these deals uh, for, for clients, and, and I had to sell my main house. That's the one I ended up selling my main home, Frog Hollow, to one of Terrence McKenna's best friends. Uh, and, and, and I had to sell four um, other rentals, and this was in the fall of 2008, if you uh, remember what that looked like with the real estate market. A lot of people are uh, under the misconception that I got out of real estate in the year 2008 because of the, you know, the 2008 mess had nothing to do with my decision. I, I, I ended up, I had to sell my house and four other houses in the fall of 2008. And uh, then the next chapter, which is where I'm going to wrap up, is as Terrence uh, will advise you, uh, is what I did. Uh, I, I sold my house. My last day as a, a real estate agent was December 31st, 2008. And on January 9th, I headed off to Peru, uh, down to the Peruvian Amazon. And you can find that story uh, in my book, and I have read the entire book. It's here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I'm pretty sure it's just in a playlist uh, about my book, Peruvian Plunge, uh, when I uh, headed down to the Peruvian Amazon, where I, I left my beautiful home and successful career and all of my friends and uh, headed down to the Peruvian Amazon to kick big oil out of the mother of God. And uh, while I was down there, I had some uh, ayahuasca and San Pedro experiences, which I talk about in that book, which were not quite as... Uh, unveiling as my first ones. So anyway, that's how I got here. That is how, uh, th that, that's trying to put a, a 15 year journey into however long I've been yakking for. Uh, you can imagine I missed a few details along the way. Obviously, Guys, I have some regrets. There is no way I'm going to sit here and act like to you that I don't have some regrets. And I think we all know what my main regret is. 
is that uh, obviously becoming a doomer, and, and more than becoming a doomer, is just my economic conditions uh, that uh, clearly uh, I have, I gave up having a woman in my life. The, and the single biggest uh, hole in my life uh, is, is not having a, a partner to uh, share this with, but I will do another rant on the pitfalls and potholes that you will hit on taking the road less traveled. The road less traveled is not for pussies. Okay, to walk away from the dominant cultural paradigm the cradle-to-grave programming ramming down your throat what is supposed to be important to you, walking away from the cultural paradigm that, uh, that has ensnared and enslaved you since the day you were born uh, is not an easy thing to do. And uh, it is not for pussies. I don't know if I recommend it or not. Um, but you see that I'm sticking with it and I'm not going back to my old self. But uh, I am still looking for uh, my Doomer chick forever. And thank God... I will not be meeting her for lunch tomorrow because I am too exhausted for how hard I am working at age 64. Uh, I, if you had told me uh, 16 years ago how hard I was going to be working at age 64, I would have said, you're crazy. But anyway, I'm going to carpe diem and uh, I think I'm going to go up to Blue Dragon Tiny House and uh, see what's going on. I hope I still have a battery and that I haven't been talking to myself for the past 20 minutes. Bye, guys. Do I still have a battery? I don't believe it. The battery light is flashing. Bye, guys.